Tomorrow night we have a, a special show with the lady who at one time, when at the peak of her career, was uh, the most famous and photographed person in the universe, uh, Shirley Temple. And uh, she will be here tomorrow night. She's now Shirley Temple Black, as you know. And uh, I don't think she's ever done this quite this sort of thing before. And uh, you, you will find her very interesting. Um, Mr. Nevin, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, makes me laugh when I think about it from your book is, uh, tell me if you don't want to tell it, or would rather just people read it for themselves. But uh, you had a, an experience with a polo game one time with Daryl Zanuck playing polo. And um, perhaps oh, it's a drag. Yes, I did, but I, I've. I've told it before. I, I, oh, I don't you? mind telling it a bit, if you don't mind listening to it again. But I, no, don't mind. Well, um, I first went to Hollywood, and I was a, an extra. Yeah. And I met the great Douglas Fairbanks, and I'd knew, known him before, and he, he thought he'd try to help me. So he said, come and have a steam. He, he said, I won't, please don't ask me for a job, but come and have a steam. Mm -hmm. And what I really wanted was a nice hot meal, you know. I didn't want a steam. <laughs> so, so anyway, he took me into this terrible steam bath, and I'm now stark naked on a, on a slab between Daryl Zanuck and, and Charlie Chaplin, and I'm an I'm a extra, I didn't know, you know, these great names, Joe Skenk, and all the head of 20th Century Fox, and Sam the Barber, and a man called Aidan Rourke, who was a 10-goal international polo player who, who worked for Daryl Zanuck, who used to play polo. So I'm sitting there thinking, now this is my way into movies, I'm gonna get a great job, and I'm sitting there pulling in the stomach, you know, and, but, but fainting in this terrible heat, and they're all used to it, and I'm, and, Z and Fairbanks had this wild sense of humor, and he knew I was broke by now, he discovered. So he said, oh, Niven, what are you going to do this winter? Are you going to play polo or bring the yacht round? Bring the yacht round. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I said, polo, polo, polo. <laughs> so I, now, then I faint and I'm carried out by, by, by Sam the Barber, who's still a 20th century fox, by the way, mm. who threw me into this ice cold plunge. And I'm now reviving on a marble slab like a fish. And I come to and I hear Fairbanks and Zanuck discussing me. And I heard Zanuck say, does he, really, does he really play polo? And, and Fairbanks said, I heard him saying, yes, he played for the British Army. It's gibberish, I never did. <laughs> so, anyway, I, I, and I thought, well, this is, anyway, I may get into movies yet. So um, Aidan Rourke lent me the hat and a stick and a whip and all these things. And I went, it's unbelievable, down to the Uplifters Club to play polo with Daryl Zanuck and these huge internationals, Elmer Bozigi and Cecil Smith, and he, and he, unbelievable it was. And I didn't know what the hell was going on. And I put in these awful clothes which are too tight and given a horse called St. George. Now, <laughs> this, this animal bit like a dog. <laughs> it was the most awful animal, and it was, it, it was snapping at everybody as I got on it. <laughs> and, and I charged about, not knowing what was going on, and the ball was whizzing around, and, and I, I didn't know what side I was on or what the hell was happening. <laughs> <laughs> and during the shambles, St. George kicked a girl, kicked it, mm, as people were going like, kicked it. <laughs> Big applause, and I get a girl. Anyway, now, <laughs> trying to stop it all time from leaving the ground and I'm finished and Aidan Rourke is collapsing with laughter and I, he said well come back in the fourth chucker whatever the hell they call it but, and it'll be calmer so I come back in the fourth on this biting brute that's underneath me and, and the great thing is I'm number one whatever that is on my team and Zanuck is the back on his team so I have to watch him mark him so I thought big impression I'm into 20th century fox you know every time he went anywhere near the ball I was, I was, I was. So the, and, the, and, the, and the moment came and somebody hit it from miles he went over our heads and Zanuck turned to defend his goal there and I'm after him on St George like this and gained on him inexorably and St George leant forward and bit him right in the <laughs> so, so here's Zanuck shrieking with, 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 with alarm and pain you know uh -huh. So I tried to ignore this hideous exhibition that was going on at that end of the thing. And in the meantime, the ball got trodden into the ground. And this, uh, it was, uh, I, saw, I saw this mushroom going past underneath. And the horse, so I, I made a vague sweep at it, the ball, with my stick, like this, which passed underneath Zanuck's pony's tail there. <laughs> I, so the, so the, the pony was highly sensitive in that department. So it, it clamped its tail with the hind, like this, and I'm strapped on the other end, and, and the pony had him by the bum in the front end, and, and, and this horrible triangle galloped past the sand. I, I, I didn't work with 20th Century Fox for about 10 years. Oh. <laughs> if only that could be filmed, just as, you, just as it happened, it would be wonderful. It would probably never make it happen again. Very awful. There's, a, there's a, a story with a, a different flavor to it about a time in the war. That, this is a favorite from the book, too, if, you, if you've told it. During the war, um, you had a chance to make a, a capture of someone uh, relatively important. Do you know the, the one yeah. I mean? 
Uh, well, there was a, a ridiculous children's game we used to play in Scotland when I was a child called L'Attac, which was a... and the French were the enemy always, and, and, and you only saw the backs of the opposing army, and they were t you attacked the various little cardboard figures, but you only saw the back, you didn't know what they were, and sometimes you attacked a mine and got blown up, and sometimes you attacked a spy looking around a bush, and, uh, mm. great fun. And the great thing was to, to capture the general, the opposing general. Now, in that awful World War II, I was in it for, for six and a half years, and there came a time towards right at the end of it, when we really had enough of it, you know, in Germany, and I was going along in a jeep, and it was over, it was really over, and I saw two farmers, on, and, and by now there were 10 million displaced persons, all the, all the people had gone from all the other countries, been working in the factories for, for, the, for the Germans, trying to get back to their own countries. It was absolutely pathetic, and trying to push bicycles with all their belongings on, and but at least free, suddenly, but starving to death in the, you know, at the roadside. And it was a shambles, and thousands and hundreds of thousands of prisoners, and a mess. Anyway, I saw these two farmers, and I was driving along in this jeep with a, with a sergeant. I was dressed up as a colonel at that point, so we were driving along. And I, I suddenly saw, as I went past, you know the way you do, you suddenly see something in retrospect, and, sh and slammed on the brakes and backed up, and I was right, and I saw field boots. Uh, underneath this farmer's long coat. So I got the revolver out and got them to put their hands up. And this man, in perfect English, I said, well, and I want to see the papers, my terrible German. So he said, this man has his, but I have none. And I said, well, who are you? And he, said, and he told me, General, somebody. A German general? German general. So this is my big moment, isn't it? To capture the general. <laughs> and, I, and I said, um, where, where are you coming from, sir? And I gave him the full bit, you know, which one does from instinct. <laughs> Ter still terrified of him. And he said from Ber Berlin, he was in the awful shambles in Berlin with the Russians. And you didn't salute with the gun in your hand. I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I said, where are you going? And, and he looked, gosh, it was awful. He said, home, he said. Uh. And I said, how far? And he said, about one more kilometer. Mm. I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it my big moment to capture General, and I said, well, cover your bloody boots up and, and go on. And, and <laughs> couldn't do it. Yeah. And the childhood game had almost Child come through for you. Yes. Yeah. That's a very nice story. I hope to God it wasn't born, and it probably was. You, know. <laughs> you suppose? <laughs> I know. Couldn't have been. I just thought of it this minute. It's couldn't an awful thought. We'll be right back after this message. <laughs> 